Glad you're safe. And now it's time for us to get started. We're here on FIFA 20 for a brand new series of career mode. And I cannot wait to bring it to you. Without further ado, let's get started with our very first episode. Hello everybody, what's going on and welcome to the first episode of our brand new FIFA 20 career mode series. A couple of days ago, I gave you the option of Southampton and Bournemouth to vote upon and 75% of that vote said that you wanted to see us take over as Bournemouth boss. So that's what we're doing today and I can't wait to give you this first episode. But before we jump into the actual episode, I'm going to set you guys a little challenge. If you can hit 150 likes on this first episode by 5.30pm tonight, I will give you another episode at 6pm UK time. I mentioned it later on in the episode as well, um, so that's the challenge for you. If you want a second episode tonight, get this video to 150 likes. Bearing in mind as well, that requires my internet also being okay, so fingers crossed that works too. Um, but as we kick things off then, we're going to do this a bit differently. We're going to do a bit of post-com and a bit of live-com for today's episode. So yeah, we're going to use both styles. Um, I will be trying to do this as much live as possible, um, but there will be episodes where I do have to do a bit of post-com as well. So one thing to mention before we do actually talk about the Bournemouth team, if you yourself are setting up career mode and you want it as realistic as you can be in terms of the teams that are playing in the European competitions, the Champions League and the Europa League, just check it out because for me, when I came into this, it had Brighton in the Europa League and not Wolves. So I don't know why it was like that. Um, as far as I was aware, it was Wolves, Arsenal and Man United, the teams that are in Europa League for, for the English teams. So yeah, just double check that before you start your series off um, because I'm a little bit OCD like that and that would have annoyed me. So I'm glad I checked it really. But we're going to start off then by going through our Bournemouth team and I, I immediately want to stress something. If you're a fan of Bournemouth and are a fan of any of the players that I get rid of, I'm sorry, but my goal here is to try and take this Bournemouth team as far as it will go. So I had to try and go ahead and get rid of the players that I didn't want to keep at the club. One of those players was Jordan Ibe. So he has been transfer listed along with numerous other ones as well. You saw me going through the list of players there moments ago. Um, so we'll see what happens in regards to that, who leaves the club, who stays. I will give you guys a full rundown later on in, uh, in probably episode two, maybe even episode three, so we can see who has left and who has stayed. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of um, information on the new career mode, of course, this year. Um, there's been some changes that have been added, including a morale system for your players and also a player chat section, as you can see right here on the screen. And essentially, what this allows you to do is be a bit more hands-on with your players, talk to them a bit more, and explain yourselves why you're maybe not putting them in the starting eleven. In this case, why I transfer listed players, because you can see that's pretty much the only message I'm getting through here. Um, but yeah, it gives you that opportunity to kind of explain yourself or, or maybe have a word with a couple of your players. And keep morale high, really, which is important, because as you'll see later on in the video, a couple of my players are very happy, and it led to their stats being bumped up a little bit, so... Make sure you're using the player chat. I don't know how much of an implication it has on you as manager in terms of if you keep your job or not. Um, I don't know if you would just kind of leave it, if the board would have a word with you and say what you're doing. You've got to be talking to your players a bit more, but I guess we'll find that out later on down the line and see what's what. I'm going to try and use it as much as I can to keep my players happy and keep them moving forward um, and see what's what in regards to that. But... Nevertheless, you can see we've gone through a lot in this early stage of the episode. Most of it was just club maintenance. Um, and also, I, I, I bought a couple of scouts. I bought three in total. Sent them to, I believe, England, Scotland, and Northern Ireland, I think, for now. They're the three that I've started to do. Um, and also, I've also purchased myself a scout future star. So... Fingers crossed, we're going to get some uh, some players coming through to this Bournemouth Academy that look like they're going to be the next world beaters, but only time will tell when we start to get those scout reports back. And one thing as well, before I jump to live for the episode, the Sims this year have been changed. It no longer plays out. It will instantly give you the result as soon as you enter it. So it no longer plays out on the right-hand side, and you can see it that way. It just does the result straight away. But nevertheless, let's jump to live for the next bit of the episode. Welcome to the live part of today's episode. We've done a bit of club maintenance, transfer listed players I don't want to keep, shortlisted players I want to bring in, and as you can see, also sold the player as well in Jordan Ibe, who has left to join Celta Vigo for £5 million. So, uh, yeah, he's not part of my plans here at Bournemouth, um, but there will be players who are. Also, I'm going to try and give you as many tips and tricks as I can about this year's career mode. There's been some new features added, but please do bear in mind, I only, of course, have 10 hours access early until the 24th, 
in which I'll be really going ham trying to give you guys content. Um, of course, the best young players, all that kind of good stuff, the pre-contracts and all of that thing um, to do as well. Without further ado, let me show you the shortlist of players that I've managed to come up with of players that I want to bring in here at Bournemouth. So these five right here, I'd already thought about bringing in. So Tammy Abraham, of course, is playing for Chelsea in real life. However, I'm going to try and loan him in. I believe he's loan listed. Calvin Phillips from Leeds United. He was potentially going to come to the Premier League. Southampton were interested. Apparently Villa were interested in real life as well. I'm interested here at Bournemouth. One of the things that's, uh, that's really... I guess intrigued me about Bournemouth is their ability to sort of buy players from sort of lower leagues and still make them into good players for the Premier League. So Phillips would fit that bill, of course, playing in the Championship with Leeds United and he would come in and uh, hopefully do a good job for us. You've got Jack Butland as well playing at Stoke who are also in the Championship, looking at making him potentially my number one goalkeeper at Bournemouth. We've got this man, Thiago Almada, who is one of the best young prospects in this year's career mode. Um, he goes to like a 93 rated player. I believe he starts at around 72, 73. And of course, James Madison as well needs no introductions. But I do think Madison might be a little bit out of our price range. We've got 30 million pounds to play with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try and bring in these top three right here. Abraham, Phillips and Butland. They're the three I want the most. If we've got money left over, I'm going to choose between Thiago Armada and James Madison as my final potential signing. So... Let's get started with these transfers. We're going to kick things off with Tammy Abraham. I'm looking at a two-year loan deal from Chelsea. I've just realised as well, got a bit more money now that Iber's gone as well. We have £41 million to spend. So uh, Abraham looks like this is going to be a deal done with Chelsea. I don't want to be paying too much. I'm going to ask them for a 30-70 split. It's a bit, yeah, I was going to say I'm a bit... I'm being a little bit cheeky here. But £30,000 I'm prepared for. They want that 60-40. I mean, Frank, mate, come on. Let's let's be Frank. But um, And Lampard has now agreed with it. There we go. It's a rubbish joke. But Tammy Abraham looks like he's coming to play for us here at Bournemouth on a two-year loan deal. We've also got as well, you might remember Harry Wilson on loan from Liverpool too. So let's jump into Calvin Phillips. Can we make the deal happen? He's valued at £7.5 million, but I'm going to start things off with a £7 million offer. And they're willing to accept that £7 million offer for Calvin Phillips, but they want an extra sell-on clause, which I'm quite happy to have in this deal. And there we go. So, Calvin Phillips, we've negotiated the fee. Can we get the contract? That's the question. And I have to say as well, when I first thought about the signings to this Bournemouth team, these two, him, uh, him Phillips and uh, Butland, were the two at my top of my list. Rotation, quite happy with that as well. The one thing I will say is manager customization this year is very, very good. They've added a little bit to it, so it allows you to customize your manager a bit more and uh, I guess make it a little bit more authentic towards you. And one thing as well is it now gives you the option to wear your club's badge on whatever it is that you're wearing, tracksuit or suit. So you can see there we've got the little Bournemouth badge just below um, our pocket. I think that's a pretty cool little addition. But nevertheless, Calvin Phillips looks like he's going to be our first monetary signing of FIFA 20. Welcome to Calvin Phillips. Time for Jack Butland. Okay, so Butland worth a bit more at £9 million, but it worked when we offered Leeds United a bit less for Phillips. So let's go with an £8 million starting offer for Jack Butland. They want 12 to Stoke. Now, Butland obviously gone down a little bit in overalls, I believe, but I think his potential still might be decent. Okay, so we're going to go 9 here. His base valuation, are they going to... Yeah, they really want that £12 million, don't they? I might be able to squeeze them for 10 but I do think they'll want this 12 million. I'm quite happy to pay it. He's obviously English as well. They're going to take some time. Have a little think about that one. So we'll skip a couple of days and hopefully they'll uh, they'll accept that deal. So they've come back and they've said that they wanted 11.5 for Jack Butland. I'm just going to accept that because I feel like that's still a decent deal for us. So Jack Butland looks like he's going to be joining this project here at Bournemouth as our new number one goalkeeper. He's an instant upgrade on Arta Boric. And uh, I can't quite remember who the other... Uh, Who's the other one we've got in goal? Oh, it's going to escape me. I can't remember. But this is a new scene, by the way, that's been added to this year's game in a restaurant this time rather than uh, just the normal, I guess, office. So, yeah, when you negotiate with players, you can meet them in a restaurant this time around. A little bit of addition, but it will kind of fall off a little bit once we get into the game. We're getting through this contract pretty quick. He wants a release clause. I do not want a release clause in Jack Butland's contract. So let's see if that's going to play too much of a part. Let's get to it and talk money. I'm willing to give him £40,000 a week to come play here at Bournemouth. Will he accept that? He will. So 
Two new signings made, and they're two of the ones I wanted the most. Welcome, Botland and Phillips. And the goalkeeper I was struggling to remember, Begovic. Asmir Begovic is, uh, is our backup goalkeeper, our number one for that matter. So, Butler's going to come in there straight away. We've also got Phillips going to move him onto the bench for Andrew Sermon. Um, we're going to partner Lewis Cook with Calvin Phillips for this game. It's quite funny that, because when you think about it, both ex-Leeds players. Um, but yeah, both of them going to be playing alongside each other. Solanke is going to go up front because he got an injury to Wilson. And I'm going to be going ahead and doing something I don't do too often, and that's playing a pre-season tour game. And this was actually supposed to be live, but in typical DJ Wood fashion, um, I'd muted the in-game sound and forgot I'd done it until about 60 minutes into the game. So you had me commentating over it with no in-game sound. So well done, DJ. Sounded a bit stupid, so I've decided to put a bit of post-con with this and a bit of music. So I'll still give you guys the highlights from this one. But to be fair, there wasn't really a lot that happened. Remember, we are playing on Ultimate straight away. So it's going to take me a little bit of time to kind of get used to the new gameplay and adapt to it. But actually... We have the lead in the game. New signing Calvin Phillips is ball through for David Brooks to run onto. And he smashed it home into the bottom corner to make it 1-0 Bournemouth after only 15 minutes. A really nice finish as well at that. Um, I timed it too. So time finish still seems to be the way to go. I don't know how broken it actually is in this year's game. Remember, you could kind of score from 25 yards out if you got the timing pretty much perfect. Um, but we timed it to perfection. Even got an achievement for it, you can see there. And David Brooks got us our first ever Bournemouth goal under our reign. So I was quite happy with that. But things didn't necessarily go our way after that. Um, we were caught out here after we threw it out with Butland and lost possession. And then Calvin Phillips, who set up the goal, then went on to give away a penalty kick. So, yeah, what a, uh, what a little debut he's having. Got an assist and then half an hour into it, gives away the pen. And now it's going to be another debutant, Butland, with an opportunity to make a name for himself as he will try and save this from the spot. I will say as well, penalties in this year's game, I'm not, I'm not too keen on them, to be honest. But up stepped the Frankfurt man and Butland did, in fact, make the save. A brilliant save it was as well to push it out. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, that was pretty much it from game number one. It's to be expected, though. Like I mentioned, new gameplay. It's going to take me time to kind of get used to it. I honestly didn't expect to have that many chances. So we won the game by a goal to nil and managed to get ourselves through to the pre-season tour final where we will take on Hoffenheim. And that game will be live and it's coming up right now. Sammy Abraham has just been loaned in as part of that two-year deal. And we did, of course, just play against Frankfurt. Um, I might have thrown some music over that and put it as post-com. Um, because halfway through, I realised I wasn't capturing in-game audio. So that's my bad. But, um, yeah, we only scored one goal. Um, it was uh, Brooks with it. David Brooks and the game ended by a goal to nil. So we're going to be playing this one here against Hoffenheim. It's the final of the pre-season tour. Um, and I will remember to capture sound this time. So uh, let's see how we get on. I've got to say, the gameplay in game number one did feel very, very good. Um, it was surprisingly good, in fact. So... Yeah, we're going to go with this team again. It's an unchanged 11 from the team that literally just played against Frankfurt. So let's get into it and actually capture what I'm feeling live this time. Because, yeah, that last film, that was my mistake. I, I forgot I wasn't uh, recording in-game audio. So my bad. Um, but I will remember to do it this time. Let's get into it. And off we go then. There's a chance here for some silverware. It might only be the pre-season tour, but I still want to win every game that we play. So uh, let's, let's make sure we try and do that. Like I said, I'm, I'm feeling surprisingly good with the gameplay at the moment. Maybe Hoffenheim will uh, bring me back down to earth if they're way too good. They're in this final, so I've not yet played around with any of the tactics with my team. I've just left it as it is, and uh, I'm just going to kind of get used to it before I start playing around with them and whatnot. I obviously don't know what's best, so we're going to be trialling error pretty much, but until we find out what we feel is best. There's Josh King here looking for the through ball to Solanke. Not going to find it, and we cannot win possession back. Here is Ake finding Phillips. It's come from our corner, which was defended by Hoffenheim. But there's still an opportunity in this for us. There's Lewis Cook again trying to find a pass through. Not going to find it yet. Phillips in towards Solanke. Back towards Phillips. Cook's there for the pass and he's going to get it. Lewis Cook with a shot. And he's put it wide. That's the best chance of the game for us outside of Ryan Fraser's running towards the box. that was blocked. Finally, we have the shot and Lewis Cook isn't too far away. But he does need to find the target and, you know, at least test the goalkeeper there. Bowman's not a bad goalkeeper by any means. So, going to need to try and uh, come up with something good to beat him. But it's us, really, that are looking the more lively in this one. So, I'm quite happy with that. Ryan Fraser in towards Solanke. King, maybe to make a run. Instead, though, gets it short to feet. Josh King now trying to go around Hoffenheim. Josh King in the box. Dragged his shot. There you go. I'm trying to time it. And maybe I shouldn't be. I don't know. But, um, yeah, wide. First half coming to a close. I can't really 
I guess, separate the two teams. We've had more shots than they have, but nothing really to test Bormann yet in goal. So let's not read into that too much. Let's just get this second half back underway and look for the goal that could well win us this game. Ryan Fraser right now is pretty much at the heart of most things that we're trying to do. But at the minute, nothing to show for it. Solanke towards Fraser. Here we go again then. Ryan Fraser! Just as I'm praising him, saying that he's at the heart, that everything that's Bournemouth at the moment, he goes and finds the goal. It's really nicely worked as well. He does feel like a very good player, Ryan Fraser, I have to say. You can see the pace he's got. And he gets in behind and he finds a fantastic finish into the bottom corner. Off and I caught out and you can see as well, it's basically one twos. And when he's in this position, Ryan Fraser, I'm looking at that bottom corner saying, please finish it. And he does just that fantastic stuff from him. We have the lead in this uh, pre-season tour final, however meaningless it may be. Um, at the moment, I feel pretty good about things here at Bournemouth. I'm excited to see just how well we can do in this first season. I think if I'm being honest with myself, a top half finish and maybe a cup success is something that I'm looking at. We get more than that. That's fantastic. But yeah. Oh, hang on a second because Hoffenheim are in. Bitten caught shots. Well, that lasted long, didn't it? It's I'm talking about what I want from the season and not focusing on defending. Bitten caught will equalise immediately. Got to say, Butland leaves a lot to be desired here near this near post. It's not a fantastic save from Jack Butland, is it? Hints of uh, mistakes creeping in there as he was doing at Stoke. But let's hope that he doesn't do that. I mean. Yeah, really strange goalkeeping there, but let's continue then. Back to square one. It was as if we never even scored. All right, we've got five changes lined up at this moment in time. Uh, Ryan Fraser set to come off as that ball through. Josh King, what a pass! Oh, he saves it! What was that from Josh King, by the way? That looks so good. There's the five changes coming through. I mean, if that had worked... Oh, it was offside, it looks like. Never mind then, I'll take that back. Tammy Abraham's on for Solanke. So we've got another option up front now. He's also very tall, is Tammy Abraham. We could actually uh, put some balls in towards the box. Here is Josh King. Now David Brooks looking to run at Hoffenheim. As that's not great. Good defending in the end. Ten minutes to play. I don't know if there's extra time or if it goes straight to penalties in preseason tours. So either you might have a penalty shootout to look forward to or another half an hour to look forward to where maybe there won't be a lot happening because, to be fair, we've had 90 minutes. We've not really done too much as that's a great win back by Cook. And now it comes to King. Finds Lerma. Lerma back towards Josh King. As he looks to fake shot. And again, some good defending stops him. Bitten caught. Sends the cross in. There's the header. And Hoffenheim take the lead with four minutes to play. It's cruel on us here at Bournemouth. Kelly went over to try and stop the cross. Blocked the first one from Bitten Court, But didn't block the second one. And a mix up. And you can see, I mean, we don't even, even try to head it away. I think it's Cook in the box. Just doesn't even attempt the header. Seemed to just stand still, didn't he? And kind of watch it. And that's not good enough. And now we are behind then with two minutes to play. We're going to have to find something as Smith carries forward. It's in towards Abraham. Still looking for a way now to try and find a goal. Abraham on the ball again. Maybe there's one last chance. Ball through. Not going to quite work out to Brooks. Time ticking away. We're going to actually fall to a defeat in our second game on FIFA 20. And the final itself, unless Abraham can come up with the goods, which he cannot. And there's the full-time whistle. Offenheim 2, Bournemouth 1. They beat us in the pre-season tour. We had the lead through Ryan Fraser. Bittencourt equalised minutes later. And then the goal to sink us. 2-1. They take the title. I can't say I'm really that bothered, but they will lift it. And it, it's meaningless. But I was actually feeling very, very good about things before we just lost that game. Like, when we took the lead with Ryan Fraser, I was thinking, you know what? We can really push this Bournemouth team this year and try and really go for cup success. And that's kind of knocked me down to earth a little bit because it seemed like I just lost concentration and I'd have gotten away with that in FIFA 19. I didn't get away with it here. Offenheim scored their only goals, really, and uh, they take the win today. Yeah, that's going to be a bit of a disappointment. Two shots on target and they scored them both. Ryan Fraser getting man of the match, though, shows how much he actually did in that game because he was by far the best player on the pitch. Um, so, disappointing, but can't really complain. Our season begins with Sheffield United in the Premier League, and that's going to be in the next episode for you all. So, yeah, Sheffield United coming up first in the Prem. Then we have Villa. 
followed by Manchester City and Leicester. So some very, very interesting games coming up in that first episode, or well, second episode, I should say, of the series. So I'm going to skip a few days here and uh, maybe go in for one of the last two players that I'm looking at and see what's what, and then I'll end the episode off. So we've got our scout report back on both players here. We've got Thiago Armada, who is 72 rated, and James Madison at 79 rated. I'm not sure how much money I've got left to play with. Um, so I'm just going to go in with uh, an offer for Madison immediately and see what Leicester want. And then if, if I can't make this happen, Armada will be the one I want next. So we've got £25 million to play with. And I feel like James Madison would be a really good addition to this Bournemouth team. Um, please bear in mind as well, guys, I know that some of you want me to be as realistic as possible. But as it is my first FIFA 20 series, I also want to just have a bit of fun and bring in the players that I really want. And I shortlisted these guys beforehand. So... Yeah, Madison, can we make it happen? 17 and a half million. They really want 25. I could still do it, but it would be all of my transfer budget. So I'm not really sure that I want to spend it all on him. 19 and a half is what I'll go to now. We're going to take some time and come back to that. So maybe we'll have Madison. Maybe we won't. We're going to find that out. So they're back again, Leicester, and they want that 25.6 million pounds. I'm going to go ahead and again negotiate it and try and get it down a little bit. If I manage to do that, you'll see it. If I don't, and it's looking like we might have to go for Thiago Armada instead. And we've managed to renegotiate the deal with Leicester to bring Madison here. We've got 19.5 million with a sell-on clause of 10%. So we have managed to knock them down from that 25 million pounds that they wanted. And even then, we could still maybe bring in Armada as well. So I'm thinking I might just do that. I know as well that hasn't given you too much time to give your inputs on, on signings that you want. But I am going to offer that to you and try and make sure to um, to try and bring some players in next season, potentially. And uh, Madison wants crucial five-year deal. We've got some young English talent as well in the team. We've got Phillips, we've got Madison, we've got um, Butland. So we're doing our um, our international team, the world of good, if we manage to get these through. £70,000 a week for Madison, I think he's acceptable. And he's happy with that. James Madison becomes our third monetary signing of this window. At the moment, I'm not sure what else we're going to be doing with the players or anything like that. But, um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way this form of team now looks. You know, if we move Josh King up front like that and take out Solanke for a second and put in, uh, where is he, James Madison there. Look at this. Look at this team. The starting 11 we've got. It's going to be a pretty good one at that. So Madison's here. Five foot nine, four star weak foot, four star skill moves. Yeah, you can see his stats. Vision, 84. Agility, 84. Crossing, ball control really good, free kick accuracy as well, short passing. We've also got Phillips in as well. Again, another player that looks very good too. Um, has the, the trait, solid player, so that says a lot about him. Um, very, very competent in that centre midfield role. Jack Butland's here too now as well as a new number one goalkeeper. Uh, we've got Ryan Fraser, who's a big part of this team alongside Brooks as well. One, one new thing too is, as you can see here, if you look at the... Um, the stats, the plus five, I think, I am i don't think that's plus five to their current stats in this one. I think it's because they're playing well. It means that they're boosted a little bit because of the fact that their, their morale's happy and they're doing all right and playing well. So that their stats are a little bit boosted. Of course, if they're playing badly, I think it goes the other way. I think that's the, the sort of addition that EA have made this year to the game um, that's going to hopefully hype it up. I mean, you can see we've done a bit of work in the training pitch with, um, with Lewis Cook. And his stats don't have that next to them. So I'm pretty sure I haven't trained King or Fraser. But because they are in good morale and all that good stuff, you can kind of see their uh, their stats are boosted. So that's one thing to look out for as well. But nevertheless, my friends, that is going to do us for today's episode. A massive thank you for watching episode one of our brand new FIFA 20 career mode series. I cannot tell you how excited I am for this series to continue. I'm going to do you a little deal. If we can hit 150 likes on this first episode by 5.30 p.m. tonight, when you're seeing this, it should be 4 p.m. on the Friday, I will give you guys episode two at 6 p.m. tonight. So you'll get a double upload of career mode right here today if you can hit 150 likes by 5.30 p.m. tonight, UK time. So that's my deal to you. If you can do it, then you will get another episode, as promised. Nevertheless, a massive thank you for watching this one. If you are new around here like what you see, hit that subscribe button down below. And I will see you all again with another video very, very soon. Until next time, adios.